A very warm welcome to the press conference of Gaul Marvels for season five of Lanka Premier League. I'm Namrata Sharma and it's an absolute delight for me to be the host of Gaul Marvels for this season. We are gathered here today to learn more about what plans Gaul Marvels have for this season of Lanka Premier League through the perspective of the most valuable and important people in our team. So on my right, uh, starting from this side, is the owner of the team, the founder and owner of Gaul Marvels, Prem Thakkar, Vice Captain Mahish Thikshana, Head Coach Graham Ford, and on my left is the Captain uh, Niroshan Dikvela, Tim Seifert, who is one of our most valued players, Assistant Coach um, Chamra Kapudigira, and Bowling and Fielding Coach Anton Rowe. So thank you so much, guys, today for joining us. And we'll start with a very quick question answer session with you all to understand more about what our viewers and fans of Gold Marvels can learn about what the plans are for Gold Marvels in this season of Lanka Premier League. So Prem, let's start with you. So as we all know, you are quite passionate about cricket. Gaul Marvels was formerly known as Gaul Titans. With this new name, what else do you think is new for this team? Change the ideology behind it. So from very first thing I would like to say is sustainability. We are here for long, you know, not uh, planning to change next year. And we are trying to build a culture which has never been done in at least Gaul's team. Uh, among the players and the fans. Like I always say, you know, fans are like our family and we want to connect one-on-one -on -one, uh, with all of you and we'll do our best to entertain you this year. That's amazing. Sustainability, definitely quite a valuable um, involvement from your side, I think. Right. So how do you see the team evolving in terms of their playing style and the competitive edge? So that, you know, I... I can't say it, anything on it yet, but we'll see it on, on the second or first game. And as we proceed in the tournament, where there's a lot of skillful players in our team and you know everybody's gonna come out and show their talents with this amazing gentleman sitting next to me and they have it all under control. And why Lanka Premier League? Why not any other tournament? And what are the future plans for Marvels? I mean, I see Lanka Premier League one day becoming, you know, IPL, Indian Premier League. And Lanka is very close to home and now I would say second home for me. So that's why Lanka Premier League. Well, all the very best to Marvels and you as well. Thank you. We will pass on to our head coach. So coach, it's the first season for Gaul Marvels and some other teams have been playing this tournament for a long time, since season one perhaps. What kind of challenges do you think you might have to face as a coach with that, having that in mind? Well, obviously it's all very fresh. We've only kind of got together as a group. Well, we had a, the, the local players yesterday and, and today we've, we've, we've had the international players start to join us. Um, so there's quite a lot of work to be done. There's quite a lot of uh, talking and um, uh, strategizing to be done. Mm -hmm. It's a, a very exciting tournament in that you play at three venues and uh, all three venues have, have their differences. So we've got to be smart and find a way to, to, to uh, put together the best 11 that can perform on those uh, particular surfaces. Um, just really to reiterate what Prem says is that th the plan is to try and play as entertaining cricket as possible. The players have fun doing that, and obviously the fans have, have a lot of fun. So we really want the fans to support us in that approach. Um, every team looks really, really strong, so plenty of challenges ahead. And we'll find out in that first game against Jaffna just, just where we stand, because uh, I think they've won, won the tournament three times. So it's a pretty tough start, and if we can, we can take them out, it shows that we're right up there. So what kind of qualities do you look for while you're selecting a player for the team? Well, I don't think it's so much about a player. It's about trying to put a group of players together. And um, in T20 cricket, um, the start of the batting is really important. The finish of the batting is really important. It's it, the, the, 
the start obviously sets the tone, so you need to get yourself some players that can really set the tone and get you started. Likewise with the ball, if you've got bowlers that can really set the tone up front and finish really well, those really tight games uh, often come down to how well each team finishes. So it's more about looking for that. Um, of course, the middle period and finding some boundaries in the middle it does count, but it's easier to find those boundaries in the middle if you've got off to a really good start. So um, it's, it's pretty much that's the formula that we're thinking about, and hence the squad that we've put together. Well, I totally agree with you. I think the start and the finish is probably the most important thing. So every player is a different individual. They're a different personality. How do you handle all of them together in a team? I'll leave it to the, the owner and the support staff. <laughs> um, no, obviously, uh, we, you want to, try, as a head coach, try and connect with as many of them. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing for any player is to know that you actually care about them. Once they know that you, you, you really care about them, the relationship develops and, and hopefully you can make them feel comfortable. Um, I think more also along the lines of what Prem said is we're trying to create a culture where everybody in our family, I know that kind of word gets thrown around, but the important thing is that there's nobody feeling uncomfortable or treading on eggshells thinking, gee, this, I'm not sure whether I really want to be here or I'm not sure whether they care about me or I'm not sure whether they uh, respect my um, thoughts. I think it's really to try and develop a culture where everybody's got a voice, everybody feels comfortable. Um, we know cricket's a confidence game. And if you're walking out there knowing that your teammates want you to do well, you've got a much better chance of performing than walking out there and saying, I wonder, I wonder whether they really want me to do well or not. So those are the kind of things that we've got to work on and try and develop very, very quickly. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, quite valuable insight. And it's an honor to have you on board with us. We'll move on to our captain, Niroshan, because it's quite correlated to everything he said, I think. As a captain, who, how do you describe your leadership sk uh, skills, your leadership style, and how do you think it impacts the team? Um, actually, the skills will... Uh uh, decide our teammates and the coaches and everyone after the tournament. But you know, uh, first thing I have to go uh, think of get along with these players and the coaching staff, and then to get to know uh, all the foreign players. But I have played against them, but I haven't played with them in the same team. And uh, there are some uh, youngsters that I haven't played uh, with them, so I have to get to know and I uh, have to think and uh, talk to coaches and the support staff how I'm gonna get full use from them uh, to impact the team. That's how we're going to work as a, as a team and as a unit. And how well do you balance your role as a captain with your performance as a player? Uh, it's, it's, uh, actually, it's very challenging. You know, being a wicketkeeper, batsman, and uh, uh, being the captain, it's very challenging. That's why I want everyone to get involved as a, as a family, as a unit. Even in the, uh, in the field, I'll always uh, get the opinion from the seniors and even the juniors, so it'll help me definitely. And going through to the tournament, there will be ups and downs, failures, good performances. So we have to appreciate everyone, everyone's performance and uh, uh, go as a team. And how would you foster team unity and maintain a positive team culture? I'm sure that's probably one of the most challenging aspects, right? That's the main thing, you know, um, a few foreign players from um, all over the world and uh, I have worked with a uh, 4D coach uh, for a long time and you know when we get along with the players and we know uh, what we can get out of them to impact the game, to win a game, so that's what matters. I think we have a pretty pretty good team and I think everyone will support each other and uh, hopefully we will win the t uh, tournament. I'm sure that's going to happen very soon that we'll see. Thank you so much. We'll move on to our Vice Captain Mahesh Tikshana. Mahesh, how do you describe your role as the Vice Captain and how does it complement the Captain's responsibilities? Uh, I think for me it's a great opportunity for as well because I'm young and I'm getting a Vice Captain role in uh, uh, franchise cricket. And uh, for me, like helping uh, Dick and just get along with the team, just always be with the boys and always like, you know, like 
got them a uh, team as like unite and support him. So that's my like role, I think. And in what ways would you support the captain, both on and off the field? Yeah, uh, sometimes I have to wake him up and uh, call him <laughs> and <laughs> give him that like wake up call. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm just kidding. Just uh, like get along with the boys, just helping with inside uh, with the feelings and like everything. I think uh, it's a great uh, opportunity and uh, it's a challenge as well. So I'm ready for it. So hopefully we'll like as a team, we'll help each other and win the trophy this year. Well, all the very best to you for this huge opportunity that you've gotten at such a young age, like you said, with all the fresh young spirit that you have, I'm sure you'll add a lot of value. Thank you so much. One last question for you, though. Can you share some examples of situations where you might have to step in as, uh, where you might have to step in and lead in the team as the captain? Or let's say in the captain's absence, if you have to step in. Yeah, then I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not there, I have to do it. But it's a challenging part. Uh, I know we, everyone can learn from like everyone because everyone have uh, some more positive things and uh, that everyone doesn't have. So we have to learn everything from uh, him and from the foreign players, from the coaches. So I think I uh, have to learn and then uh, just thinking what should do in the moment. So it's always about like making decisions when you're a captain. So hopefully I can do it better. He thinks he can do it better, Narushan. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. We'll move over to Tim Seifert, who's one of our most valued players. So Tim, you played all around the world, various different countries, various different conditions. How challenging is it to adapt to all these different conditions? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's always hard, but at the same time, you, you go on your past and um, lucky enough to, to play here last year, so you definitely have the... Um, the mindset that you've you've played on these wickets before, and I mean, look, there's different services all around the world, but you know, in the Asia conditions, they're all kind of much of a much. So it's about just developing as fast as you can, and, and talking to local players or overseas players that have played in these conditions uh, before, and just learning as fast as possible. And how do you manage the pressure of being a key player, and the expectations that come with it? Yeah, I think. Uh, the main thing is just enjoying it with the team. I think that's just part and parcel of professional sport, no matter if you're playing for your country or you're playing uh, for a franchise or your domestic team. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of pressure, but I think the main thing is if you gel as a team and, and you have fun, um, you know the pressure isn't so bad. Um, and sometimes the pressure is actually bigger than what you think as well. So, yeah, it's always about just having a smile on your face and hopefully doing as well as possible. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree with you. Just have fun. That's the most important part, right? <laughs> so what can we expect from you in terms of your collaboration with Gaul Marvels for the Season 5 of Lanka Premier League? Yeah, well, hopefully the main thing is that we're here to win it. So hopefully I can uh, help the team do that. Um, but also, you know, bring my experience from, from last year. And as Dikwela said, we have a lot of experienced people, but also the young guys, and, and they're going to win the tournament as well, not just senior guys. So uh, as Fordy said, it's about uh, adapting and uh, bringing the team together as, as fast as possible. And um, I think it just as it comes down to whoever can gel as a team the fastest. And... Um, yeah, I'm looking at our squad, it's a very exciting team, um, but personally, yeah, I'm very excited for this year and, and a new ownership as well, it's always exciting and um, yeah, looking forward to getting stuck in in a few days' time. Thank you so much, to, uh, Tim. We are absolutely looking forward to see you smashing on the field as usual. We'll move over to our assistant coach, Chamra Kapudagira. Chamra, can you describe your primary responsibilities as the assistant coach in the team? Yeah, uh, it's uh, coaching role is always about supporting the players and uh, helping them uh, to get uh, get to their best uh, before the games and during the games, help uh, and encourage them as much as possible, and also uh, helping the head coach and the other coaches or the support staff to uh, get get where they want to go or help them to be their best, so that's basically my role. Like you said, how do you collaborate with the head coach 
in formulating strategies and different training regimes? Yeah, uh, it's simple. Uh, make uh, his life easy so he has clear mind to make all the decisions and uh, strategies so, and help him whatever I can, uh, give my input or my experience uh, to him to make the correct, uh, right decisions and uh, helping along the way. Uh, and also uh, help, helping him to understand the local guys. Uh, I know he has he's been here uh, before as, as our head coach for Sri Lanka team, but uh, understanding the younger guys' mindset and uh, uh, especially the communication. So uh, that's uh, basically I'm, I can help him out with that. So I'm, I hope I can do that uh, well. So, yeah. Yeah, like you said, I'm sure being a local guy is going to be absolutely helpful for the coach. Thank you so much. We'll move over to our bowling and fielding coach, Anton Drew. So, Anton, how do you use a bowler's strengths or weaknesses in this T20 format? Uh, I mean, ideally, you want to have a bowler that can face sort of any situation, don't you? But, um, you know, there are certain matchups that certain bowlers might, you know, do well against. Uh, you know, so that's part of our role is to try and find those matchups and what they are and try and prepare the players as best as possible. But we also want to leave a bit of space for the captain to make, you know, decisions on the go as they, as they come along um, because the game might dictate something completely different, you know. So ideally for us as coaches, we just want to try and give them as much tools as, as possible to work with. And then ultimately we've got to try and put that jigsaw puzzle together by getting those matchups right. Right. And what specific techniques or skills do you emphasize on for fast bowlers versus spinners? Uh, I think for fast bowlers, uh, ideally you want to try and move the ball as much as you can. So either that's through the air or off the wicket, um, or you're going to add a bit of mystery with your slow ball. Same thing with spinners. If you're not really a big turner of the ball, you've got to have a little bit of mystery like uh, our one and only Mahesh sitting over there. So ideally that's what you want to want to do. But ultimately I think the most important skill for bowlers to have is to adapt and read the situation of what the conditions give you and then make those right decisions on the spot and, and hopefully, hopefully that gets us over the line. And how important role does a bowling coach play? Uh, how, how important the role is that you play in a team? Well, I mean, we've got a, as it's been mentioned before by everyone, we've got a good uh, mixture of exp experience and, uh, and youth in our side. So for me, it's about tapping into those experienced players and, and drawing as much as information as possible from them. Um, and adapting it into, into our team. Um, I think there's plenty of guys that have been in situations before and, and you know, T20 is a, is a game that you've got to make those quick decisions on the spot. So hopefully I can just make their life as easy as possible by giving them as much information so that they can make those decisions easily on the field. Thank you so much, Coach. And thank you all gentlemen sitting here today for all those valuable insights and for letting our viewers and all the fans of Gold Marvels understand and learn more about everything that they must look forward to whilst we are excitedly waiting for the season five of Lanka Premier League to start within just two days time. Final countdown has begun. So hoping to take that trophy back home with us, yeah? <laughs> all right, thank you so much.